So Christmas is here. Do you have a budget? On this episode, we're going to talk about setting a Christmas budget to make sure you can stay on track with buying your first home. Welcome to the Homeowner Prep Podcast, where every week we educate and encourage aspiring homeowners to help them buy their first home faster. If you aspire to own a home, you're in the right place. So enjoy. Do us a favor and leave a review, a rating, and be sure to subscribe. Now let's get to this week's episode. Hey, real quick before we start, I want to ask you a question. How long are you going to wait before you decide to get started? I mean, you want to buy a house and you're earning income. So what's holding you back? Visit our website at homeownerprep.com forward slash start. You can take an online assessment and set up a free 30 minute call. And we're going to put a plan together to help you get from where you are to where you truly want to be. So don't let fear hold you back from buying your first home. All right, now back to the episode. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Homeowner Prep Podcast. You know, I have this episode set aside every year because I like to talk about budgeting and especially during this time of year, Christmas budgeting. You know, a lot of times folks really lose control when it comes to Christmas time and understandably, I mean, as a culture, we are taught to spin, 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 even if we don't have it. And so in this episode, I'm going to talk to you about budgeting for Christmas, making sure that yes, you have fun and you enjoy the holidays, but you don't let it sidetrack you from your goal of owning your first home. You know, there's a lot of folks who will pay for Christmas and end up going into the first three months of the new year paying off that Christmas. And so I don't want you to be in that situation. My first tip for you is to definitely set a plan. You cannot have a budget without a plan. And so in this plan, you need to figure out, one, who are all the people in your life that you're going to be spending time with? These are the folks that are either going to be in your home or if you're going to be traveling between homes to go visit family, just get an idea of all the folks that you're going to see and want to get gifts for. The second thing you can do is once you have established how many people you're going to see and how many people you're going to be buying gifts for, Try to figure out some wants and some needs for each of those folks. Some folks you may buy some needs for. Some people just really need something and Christmas is a great time to get it for them. Where others, you may not necessarily know what they need. And so you may buy something that they may want. And so that'll help you to kind of establish, hey, here's how many gifts I'm going to be purchasing this year. And then the next step in that plan is to actually set the financial budget. So you know, okay, here are all the people. Here are all the gifts, and here's how much I'm going to actually spend. And so when it comes to setting a Christmas budget, it helps to know who you're going to see, what they need or what they want, and then establishing a small budget, whether you're writing it down or using an app to just figure out how much you plan to spend for the year. That way, when Christmas is over, you can really measure your success. I mean, did you stick to your budget? Did you go over? If you did, by how much? Did you go under? And if so, by how much? What are you going to do with the money that you may have saved by staying under your budget? You know, by having a plan, you can really put some things into motion. And like I said, the biggest thing is that it won't distract you from your ultimate goal, which is buying your first home. So yes, you want to create a plan. And in that plan and and part of budgeting, the biggest hurdle to get over is peer pressure. You know, we are often pressured by family, by friends, by the culture, by commercials to spend, spend, spend. And so it's important that once you have a plan in place that you stick to it and that you realize that, yes, you're going to come up against different pressures or cultural norms, if you would, and how are you going to deal with those as they arise. And so have a plan in place for that as well. You know, obviously one of the best ways to handle the peer pressure of overspending for the holidays is to use cash. I mean, a lot of folks will directly pull cash out of their account and they'll use cash as they're shopping. That way they can really feel the spending. They can stick to their budget and they can really see how much they're spending on each item, each gift and each person. This will help if you, you know, use an envelope system. I know some folks have heard about an envelope system where you kind of put your bills in the envelope or you put like fast food or, you know, eating out, whatever the case may be into an envelope. And once you're out, you're out. You can do that with Christmas spending as well. If you have a Christmas budget, put that cash into the envelope. You're out, you're spending money. Once you're out of cash, you're done shopping. 
and that'll help you to protect against the peer pressures of the culture. So I would definitely suggest you using something like that if you can, if you really struggle with peer pressure. The third thing I do want to talk about is actually a phenomenon that we see each and every year where folks are putting all their Christmas spending on credit cards. And I really want you to avoid doing that this year. The average American spends almost $900 uh, on Christmas spending, but over 50% of that is on credit cards. And so we want to avoid you using credit cards and try to use cash as much as possible. One, it's going to help you stick to the budget that you set. It's going to help you avoid the peer pressure because once you're out of cash, you're out of cash. And it's going to help to make sure that you're not paying for Christmas three months into the new year. By putting it on credit cards, I understand there's a great use for credit cards and people use them for different reasons. But when it comes to Christmas shopping, the last thing you want to do is be spending money in December and carrying that over for the first three to five months of the new year. And so try your best to avoid doing that. Again, try to use cash if you can. But if you are going to use credit cards, try your best to pay them all off when the statement becomes due. In fact, the best way to do it is to find out when your credit card company is going to report to the credit agencies and try to pay it off before then. That way they don't even report it to the credit agencies and you protect your credit scores and report. Again, the goal is for you to buy your first home. So credit is very important. And so these are the things that you can do to protect yourself against the peer pressures, against some of the cultural norms, and really make sure that you're set up for success going into the Christmas season. If you need any help with establishing a budget and just sticking to a budget or some advice on different apps to use, anything like that, you can definitely reach out to us. You can visit us on our website at homeownerprep.com forward slash start. There you can get started with us as far as sitting down, creating a budget, and really looking at the goal of home ownership and how to get there. Um, but if you just have a direct question that you need answered or, you know, uh, advice to a particular app that you want to use, definitely feel free to reach out to us on all of our social media channels. We tend to get the majority of our questions on Instagram, so you can find us on Instagram at Homeowner Prep. I hope you got some value from today's episode. I know that we're coming into the Christmas season. There's a lot of spending taking place. I hope you spend smartly. I hope that you set a budget and you stick to your budget. So that, that way you can make sure that you're on track to buying your first home in the new year. I look forward to providing you with some great info on the next episode. And until then, be blessed. If you've enjoyed this show and got some great value from it, please be sure to rate and review. And if you're checking it out on YouTube, please be sure to subscribe. That really does help us to continue the show and bring in some great guests to help you on your home buying journey.